But some of this is going to be uh, familiar to you because we've already done strain gauge attachment. Uh, the difference here is we're going to be doing the strain gauge attachment onto an aluminum can instead of onto uh, the dog bone like we did before. And yesterday I did an axial strain gauge attachment, which means the strain gauge was attached in this direction. Today, we're going to do a hoop strain gauge attachment, which means it's going to come around this way. And uh, can you tell me what the difference is between the stress that we're going to see in the hoop as compared to the longitudinal? Two times. Two times. That's right. Hoop stress is going to be twice as great as a longitudinal stress. So. Um, can you um, can you make a, a bet on whether you think this can is going to be assumed a thin wall pressure vessel? And if we make that assumption, what is the criteria? Yes. And uh, I think it was the thickness is less than or equal to 10% of the uh, some something of the radius. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. That was what it was. Okay. Got it. Of the radius. Yeah. Got it. So the thickness has to be um, uh, less than a tenth of the radius. So we're going to, we're going to do some measurements on thickness. <clears throat> going to do measurements on the radius. We're going to see if we can make that assumption. If we can, then we got some really sweet equations that calculations that we can do to determine the internal pressure uh, in the can. And the internal pressure is just gonna be the difference in the pre and post strain readings um, when we open the top, okay? Um, so for a cylindrical pressure, the thin wall pressure vessel. All right, so let's get, let's get this process started. So uh, first, we need to um, clean it, right? So we have our degreaser. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get some gauze ready here. I'm just gonna spray a little bit of that degreaser on my, on my gauze pad. And I'm just going to take that and just wipe the whole can with it. I'm using gloves here to keep the, uh, the grease off my gloves. Move this a little bit this way. Okay. Uh, all right. So we've done that degreasing. We have our sandpaper. Uh, I think this is We'll just call this fine grit and, and coarse grit. So we start with our coarse grit. And uh, remember the story that I told you about the student that rubbed too hard and the whole can uh, burst open. Let's not have that happen to us. So I'm gonna be very light and I'm gonna do circular motions and I'm just trying to get enough to where I can get down to bare aluminum. No more than that, just down to bare aluminum. I'm being very light starting out with the course. And now I'm gonna go and uh, add that conditioner A because I want uh, I want this to be a wet lap process. And I'm not gonna let it dry out on me. I'm gonna keep it wet. I'm going on to the um, fine grit and I am down to the bare aluminum so I'm going to stop there. Uh, before it dries I'm going to use a wet gauze, a little bit more of the uh, conditioner and start from the center and wipe outwards. Clean section of gauze each time I do that. Let's do this one more time with the clean gauze. <clears throat> Okay, looks good there. Um, 
Okay, now I want to use the um, neutralizer. Um, the neutralizer, we're going to use that with the uh, Q-tips instead of the gauze. <laughs> And I'm going to start in the center. And I'm going to roll outwards with that, with a clean section of the Q-tip each time around. Grab another clean one. Okay, there is the neutralizer. Um, I'm going to set the can over here to the side um, and we are going to prepare our strain gauge. So these are the str same strain gauges that we used for the dog bone. Um, I did a little bit more research on these. Um, it looks like, you know, there's no, there was no paperwork that I could find that came with these strain gauges. And as you remember, we were getting um, questionable strain data from the, um, when we were looking at the, at the slope to calculate the Young's modulus. So the Young's modulus from the strain gauge data was substantially different than the, than the Young's modulus that we were calculating using the, um, the Instron extends um, extension. Uh, so what I found I, out was that I think that some of the settings for the transducer settings on the system might have been incorrect. So I made those modifications this morning. These are actually three millimeter long. The gauge length on these things is three millimeters long, not one millimeter long. So I modified that to be three millimeter for the gauge length on these. And they definitely are the 120 ohm resistors. We got that pretty um, obvious from actually just measuring it with a multimeter. So I'm gonna start out by taking a piece of the tape, uh, setting it down with the sticky side facing up. I'm gonna take one of these little strain gauges here Um, I'm going to place it with the, um, basically with it upside down. So let's just, uh, there. I placed the strain gauge down onto the tape. Uh, now I'm going to put it onto our can. But remember, uh, we, uh, we're gonna do a hoop attachment. So let's get our um, calipers out and we'll do measurements on this. So get out your pencil and paper and write these numbers down, okay? So I've zeroed my calipers. Let's get the radius on this guy. Uh, looks like we have uh, 60, 66 even, 66 millimeters for the radius and our length, which really isn't necessary for our calculations, but we're going to get it anyways. Uh, 122 millimeters for our length. And so we're going to go with uh, 61 will be half that that will be the center. So I'm putting it just a little scribe mark where, let me, let me just lock this down. I'm gonna put a scribe mark, but ever so lightly, just so it's scratching through the paint and nothing else, uh, just off to the side of my clean area. <clears throat> OK, 
Okay, now I'm going to put the strain gauge down, remember, in the uh, hoop direction um, without any glue first, right at the scribe mark, but on the aluminum. Okay, so now I'm just going to make sure it looks like it's parallel. I think it's a little bit off. Let me go. That's better. Okay, and then I peel it back. Um, I'm peeling it back like that after I've attached it. <clears throat> okay, so now I have to use my uh, catalyst here. Let me hold that from rolling. And do 10 wipes on the side of the bottle. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then one stroke across the gauge, back side of the gauge. Just like that. Now, um, for the super glue, the uh, M Bond 200 is called. I'm going to just do a little practice dab here to make sure that I don't overdo it. I want to do as small of an application amount as possible. Uh, this thing might be blocked. It might be blocked here, so I'm going to try to open up the hole a little bit. There we go. I think that did the trick. There. Yeah. Okay, so um, I'm just going to put it just at the boundary between the tape and the metal. Um, I'm going to pull the tape away. I'm just going to do like a Push, I'm going to push on that and kind of roll it, squeegee it in, get, make sure I can see the glue um, moving in and over and I'm sorry, underneath the uh, strain gauge. Now I'm just going to hold it here. If somebody could please start their watch and tell me when one minute is up. After one minute, I can, I'm going to release the pressure <clears throat> and I'm going to let it sit for another two minutes. <clears throat> to get uh, the full bond. <clears throat> so while this is drying, I'm gonna uh, use these little copper pads here, just like we did before. This has the adhesive backing on it. So we're gonna be able to just cut two of these off here and um, attach it within a sixteenth of an inch of the uh, solder tabs that, that are a part of the uh, strain gauge. I also have my um, soldering iron here, which uh, I'm going to go ahead and plug it, plug this in so that we uh, are getting that thing preheated. We need to get it at uh, about approximately 375, 350, somewhere around there. Um, the little dial on there um, does get bumped and it changes temperature on me. So I'm going to put a little tiny little piece of um, painter's tape on there to keep that temperature from shifting on me. It's been, it's been about over a minute. Yeah. Okay, perfect. 
All right, so I've released the pressure on that. Um, I'm gonna cut uh, two of these copper pads off. Um, I do have a pair of tweezers here that I can use to try to peel the back of the um, in, uh, adhesive backing on this thing. Ah, there we go. Okay. Beautiful. All right. So we got that prepared and ready to go. I'll just set that down there. <clears throat> uh, now I can pull the tape off. So I'm going to pull the tape off in on the side that's opposite of the wire strands because I don't want to put any uh, stress on those strands and bend them upwards. So I'm kind of pulling this at a real gradual angle starting from the corner of the gauge and lifting ever so slowly. All right, there we have it. Looks like we got a good attachment. Um, the, 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 let's see, got to get this off here. Stop. Okay, now I'm going to lift up the wire strands uh, so that I can attach the copper pad underneath it. I'm going to put it, I'm going to get it right up against, uh, oops. There we go. And just, uh, I guess, use the back of the tweezers here and just push it down. I take my uh, coarse grit sandpaper here and clean the pads up a little bit. I'd like to get them a nice copper sheen to it, bright copper sheen. That's going to be important for good solder contact. Now I'm bringing the wire strands down. Um, make sure I don't cross them over. Okay, so I'm putting the wire strands down so that they uh, go over the top of the aluminum. Uh, and so I put the wire strands so that they're over the top of the aluminum. Now we're going to prepare our um, red wires, which are going to be used to attach the um, alligator clips. Uh, this end just needs to burn off about an eighth of an inch of uh, insulation. On this end, I'm going to burn off about an inch. The inch side goes to the alligator clips. The eighth of an inch is just the part that's going to to be attached to the uh, strain gauge. Um, I'll use this coarse grit sandpaper here to just clean up the ends of the wires so that I get a nice copper sheen to them again. Same goes for these two wires. Just clean them up a bit. This is going to make soldering a thousand times nicer here. If you ever solder a copper Plumbing, this is what they do. They use a wire brush and they get it nice and clean here. I'm going to trim the ends of these so that I only have about an eighth of an inch of exposed um, insulation. <clears throat> and I'm going to use this um, painter's tape here. So we're going to take my gloves off. I'm going to use this painter's tape to hold the wires in place. Uh, Painter's tape is really helpful when you're doing any kind of soldering to hold things in place uh, because you only have two hands. One hand is holding the solder, one hand is holding the soldering iron, and you don't really have anything to hold uh, your wires. So 
if you don't have any fancy schmancy uh, fixtures to hold things in place, um, then painter's tape really does the trick for you. So I'm going to straighten out the, the wires and then set it so that the there's a, maybe a little bit of a curve to it. And because I want it to attach and hold there. So the first wire, I'm going to put that painter's tape down as close to the gauge as possible. Um, and then take the other one with another piece of painter's tape. Hold that other wire. Again, put a little bit of a curve to it so that it's got, it's going to be as close to that as possible. And I'm going to put that painter's tape down there as close to that um, pads as possible. And then push down on those wires to make sure that they're going to make good contact. So those wires are um, overlapping each other on each one of those copper pads. Okay, so now we're going to get our soldering iron turned on and uh, get ready to start the soldering. So I got my solder here, which is lead free. It does have flux in it, so it can be used to clean the tip. I have a wet, a wet sponge here as well, which uh, is going to be used to clean the tip. So the process for soldering, oh, here, here let me put a little bit of uh, painter's tape on the temperature um, the dial here on the soldering iron after I set it to about 360. Just put a little bit of uh, painter's tape on there. Um, and I'm going to just keep touching this has a 45 degree bevel on it and it's kind of beating up right now so that means it's it's not clean it has to the solder has to really wet the, the tip and then you just wipe again and without any delay you go on to the soldering so we're going to first put the solder soldering iron down with firm pressure and then touch the solder just at the tip there. I don't like what's going on right now. It's not okay. There we go. Perfect. Once I can see that it's completely wet the, the pads, I'm going to lift it up. Now I'm on to the second one. First I touch it to the end of the tip. I kind of work the soldering iron a little bit, push it down, and then release. So it's soldering iron down first, firm pressure with the flat bevel right up against there. Touch the solder at the tip. The um, You'll get good heat conduction as soon as the solder can start to flow between the tip and the pad. Once you get a little bit of solder there, that's the, the thermal conduction path that really allows the pads to melt nicely. And um, then you just wait another one or two seconds before you lift. Okay, now I'm pulling the tape off. And I'm going to keep a little bit of that tape. I'm going to use my scissors to trim the excess um, wire strands that were part of that strain gauge. I'm going to trim those off because they can short out, short together or whatever. And uh, the final thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to lift these red wires up and put a little tiny piece of painter's tape below the wires just to act as a electrical insulation in case there's a little bit of exposed copper there. Um, 
And uh, there you have it. Strain gauge attached in the hoop direction at the center of the can. All right, I'm gonna get the multimeter and we're gonna test the wires here to verify that we got 120 ohms resistance. I'm going to turn on that multimeter and switch it over to the ohm setting. And just uh, wrap the wire around the end of the probes for each of these. And it looks like I got a good 120 ohms resistance. So we're good to go. And we're gonna walk this thing over to the Instron and we're gonna start um, hooking it up to there and run our test. Uh, I wanna make sure I turn off my soldering iron right away after I'm done using it. Cause the tip gets pretty burned up. Um, if it's left on for longer than you need it. All right. So I already got the Instron tester um, set up here. And uh, this was the one from, this is the one from yesterday, it's still attached. Uh, we've already cut it open. Uh, that was the one that was done in the longitudinal direction, as you can see there. Okay, that was the axle. Same exact can, by the way, and that's kind of important. That's going to help us compare apples to apples when we look at these this data. So it's they're both made by this Holly Dolly Tin City Cider Company. Uh, this is pretty much a standard soda type can. It's not like the Arizona or whatever, which uses uh, a much thinner aluminum. These ones are typically under more pressure uh, because they're heavily carbonated. And so they go with almost twice of a thick uh, aluminum. Uh, we'll learn about that thickness after we've completed the test. <clears throat> so I'm just going to attach the alligator clips to the wires. Okay, I've got them attached. Now over here uh, on the um, Instron, I have, uh, let's see, i make sure that you all can see that. Okay, so here on the Instron, um, I brought up the uh, transducer settings and uh, I changed the gauge length to three millimeters. Um, and if you can see up here, the strain gauge reading is 0 0.00023. Somebody, one of my students brought this up uh, yesterday. He asked, why can't you zero this? Well, I think you can, if you click this balance, you can see that our strain gauge is now all zeros. Um, so I can click done here now that I've set up the transducer. Uh, we're going to ignore load and extension uh, because we're only going to look at time versus strain. So if I click on test, we just have a single graph here of strain gauge versus time. Okay. So um, is everyone ready for me to start the test? Let's do this. Yep, <laughs> let's do it <laughs> like that. All right, so um, I think I just hit this here, start test. Uh, wait. <laughs> just when I got you all excited. 
Um, let me see what's going on here. I'm not getting a start test option. All right, let's try this again. Uh, pressure vessel Tuesday, and this is going to be a hoop one. <clears throat> Okay, cool. Now I got the start enabled. Strain gauge is zeroed. Um, and we can go ahead and start the test. Here we go. One, two, three. Okay, so I'm just going to squeeze this can just a little bit. That's just me squeezing on it. All right, so we can tell how sensitive this thing is. Um, you can ignore that part of the data when you take the average of the pre-value. So now I'm going to go ahead and open it. Ready? One. Oop, see that was me barely touching it. That's me touching it just to get it open. Oh, darn it. Okay. Man, that's awesome. Uh, very sensitive. Lots Thank of... You. I haven't seen one that good since I started doing this, man. Huh. All right, so I'm going to stop it. What's on the y-axis again? I forgot. The y-axis is the um, it, um, it's the strain. It's millimeter per millimeter. So it's the um, data that we're we're collecting from that strain gauge. And it went down as the pressure. I, Maybe, I don't know. Yeah, no, no, I'll explain. Um, okay. So the, the pressure, the pressure um, went down to a negative number. Um, and that's the opposite of what, what, what was happening when we were doing the dog bone, yeah. where the, the strain was becoming more and more positive. Mm -hmm. And that was because we were, we were extending that strain gauge and we, we were, by extending it, we were lowering the resistance um, and that's equating to um, a tensile strain. Okay. What's happening now is, is we're compressing it. We're compressing that strain gauge because oh. that we're releasing that pressure. Got it, got it. Oh, that's cool. Okay, okay. So it goes negative. Nice. Yeah. All right, so now we have one open uh, can of, uh, I'm gonna, um, if anybody's interested in, in drinking a bubbly rosé, um, come on down to the lab because uh, I'm about to dump this down the drain if I don't get any takers. Sounds like an easy way to get COVID, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I totally would, but I'm in Sacramento, so. <laughs> okay. Well. Thank you. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> I, I was saving these for my wife, but um, she uh, she doesn't need any more of this. <laughs> she's already a she's already a bit of a wino. Drinks. A lot. Oh, there's alcohol in there. Huh? There's alcohol in there. Oh yeah, yeah. This is this oh. is. It. This is champagne in an aluminum can. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> I would have gone. I would have totally gone. 
Oh yeah, last quarter when we were all in person, one of my, uh, one of the um, labs, they all brought Coors Light. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. They give you uh, more financial aid than that. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and these weren't like the regular size Coors Light cans. These were like forty-eight ounces or whatever they were. Well, they were the frat boy version. <laughs> oh, the frat boy versions. Yes. <laughs> okay. I got my pair of scissors here. Um, we're gonna go ahead and cut open. <sighs> open the can. So that we can get our thickness of the. There's one side. It's like probably the most dangerous part of this job. This um, final cut, I'm gonna do like right near the the strain gauge. Uh, I'm gonna cut cut it kind of right across here, and that way we can get some good thickness readings right near the strain gauge. Um, so here's my uh, micrometer. Okay, different than calipers. Micrometers are more precise. Uh, this thing is already zeroed. It's a digital micrometer. So, okay, guys, get out your uh, lab, lab notebooks and start writing down some numbers. I'm going to take a whole bunch of readings. Okay, 0 0.100. 0 0.116. 0 0.091, 0 0.092, 0 0.091, 0 0.105. Uh, I'm just going kind of around the whole can. I started out. Um, with measurements right around the strain gauge, 0 0.099, 0 0.109. Okay, that should be enough. Um, <clears throat> okay. Uh, I'm gonna, you don't need to stick around for me to uh, pull the data off the Instron, but, um, and you don't need to stick around for the cleanup. I can handle that. Um, but I will post the data to the Canvas page with, the, with yesterday's data. Um, and are there any remaining questions? I have a couple questions. Um, just uh, for the measurements we just took, is that in millimeters for the thickness? Okay, thanks for asking. Uh, yes, that's in millimeters. And then was the radius you gave us, was that, did you divide by two or was that the diameter, the 66? Um, that was mil the diameter. Okay. Yeah, that was the diameter also in millimeters. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Uh-huh. You bet. Good questions. Um, okay. Anybody else? Any questions from Will? Alexi? Ben? No? You guys all good? Yay. Awesome, man. Thank you all for coming and uh, we'll see you next week.